What's up guys? If poker has you doubting yourself, then this video will be very useful for you. Now I'm currently coaching a group of players through my poker athlete program and we work on eight skills over the course of eight weeks. The second skill we work on is emotional regulation and Every week we come together and we discuss what's going on with each of the players and the problems that they are facing. Now with this skill, over the last week, a lot of the players were running into self-blame and self-doubt. And it was causing a lot of problems going forward. A lot of their emotional issues were arising from this same root. So today, I'm gonna to take you through the framework I take my players through and give you guys a better perspective and some action steps you can take to overcome self-doubt. As a poker player, we all face it. Every player goes through periods where they're doubting themselves, they're blaming themselves, and they're thinking, how am I gonna get out of this situation, all right? So it's normal, but at the same time, we don't want to dwell there. We don't want to uh, feel sorry for ourselves and feel like a victim of our circumstances, all right? So I'm gonna take you on a little journey throughout this video of how to start to come to terms with self-doubt and how to over override it in the long term. All right, so the first thing I did with my poker athletes, the way I coach this skill, is to understand what emotions are coming up. All right, so the first week, you explore what emotions are coming to the surface for you. All right, so for my poker athletes, the most common three emotions that came up over the week were frustration, anxiety, and anger. All right, this is in the poker context, maybe there's some other emotions outside, but as they were grinding, these emotions were coming up, all right? So we started to build awareness of what are the emotions that we're actually struggling with. We then start to look at what are the triggers, all right? The triggers are, are the events that happen that lead to that emotional response, all right? So the most common uh, triggers for the players were making mistakes, when they made a mistake that they feel they shouldn't have, that was causing emotional flare-ups, running bad, bad runs of cards, bad run of results, and consecutive bad beats when players were running pad, but like consecutively in a short space of time, that was causing a lot of problems. All right, so this instantly creates a good little equation that we've got. We've got the trigger events leading to the emotion. All right, so they're linked together. When they make mistakes, run bad, or have consecutive bad beats, these emotions come to the surface, all right, which were frustration, anxiety, and anger. We then start to have a look at the internal dialogue. All right, a lot of people give advice like, speak nicer to yourself, don't be so hard on yourself, don't, don't worry about stuff. And they tell you this very blank kind of meaningful, like trying to be helpful advice, but does nothing to help you, all right? If you wanna change it in a dialogue, you need to start thinking in terms of inner critic voices and inner coach voices, all right? I'll explain more about that as I go for the video. But basically the inner critic voice is very negative, dwells on stuff, blames a lot. And the inner coach is generally the solution to those problems, all right? So when we start to explore the triggers and what the inner voice was saying, how the inner dialogue was going in their mind, as we, I told them to tell me what they were thinking, they were using dialogue like this. So when they made mistakes, they'd say, I should know better. I should know better. When they were running bad, they would say things like, I'm not progressing. I'm moving away from my goals. And when they were having consecutive bad beats, the inner voice was saying, what if I keep losing? What if I can't turn this around? When is this going to end? All right, so all of these voices, I would call inner critic, all right? They're very negative. They're dwelling on, I should be better, I should progress, I, I need to, I can't keep losing. They're very focused on the negative. Now, when we break this down further, I've got like a kind of process I take players through to explore this, but when, when you explore this further, you see that all of these voices are that of self-blame, and self-doubt, all right? So this inner coach, which is the negative part of you, can have self-blame, it can have catastrophizing, where it blows things out of proportion, it can have uh, rumination, where it replays hands and spots over and over, or it can blame others. They're the foremost dominant in our credit voices. All of these, which I was quite surprised by, all came down to self-blame, right? and self-blame leading to self-doubt. All right, so we've built here, I, I took you for this process, to arrive at this point now where you're blaming yourself. Things aren't going your way, emotions are coming up, and the inner dialogue is leading to self-blame. All right, we need to go for that process because if not, we're trying to solve something at the end of the equation, like the, the self-blame, the self but we don't understand why it's happening. 
Now we know it's happening because it's in a critic voice, it's responding to certain events, emotions are coming up, and the dialogue is that of an inner critic. All right, so now we need to move to how do we start solving the problem? All right, so when you're blaming yourself and when you're doubting yourself, you need to counter that with a different inner dialogue, right? So we've got the inner critic on one side, we need the inner coach, which I call the more constructive voice, to counter that, all right? And the inner coach is the solution to the inner critic's dramas, in all honesty, all right? So the inner coach, when it comes to self-blame and self-doubt, it's number one trump card. If you can use this card, it wins every time. And it's acceptance, all right? So when you're blaming yourself, let's have a look at them. I should know better. If you start to accept the situations more, all of a sudden you don't create any of this tension. You don't create the self-blame and the self-doubt. So uh, I should know better. Acceptance is, I didn't know better. I made a mistake and I'm okay with that. So the acceptance voice to look out for is, I'm okay. I made a mistake and I'm okay with that. Things didn't go my way, I'm okay with that. I can handle it. I can handle making mistakes. I can handle things not go my way. So when it comes to not progressing, I'm not progressing, had a bad session, I'm okay with that, I accept that. What if I keep losing? What if I keep losing? I accept that, I'm okay with that. So uh, we've gotta get good at like balancing the, these self-doubt and self-blaming voices with the, these of acceptance. All right, acceptance is the ultimate way. All right, so every time you're doubting yourself, start thinking, okay, what, what, what am I struggling to accept? What am I struggling to accept? All right, so for these players, making mistakes, running bad, and consecutive bad beats, they're all part of the game. They're all part of the game. They need to get better at accepting them. All right, so that's, that's the, the most dominant in a coach voice that you learn to strengthen, all right? The next one was is putting things in perspective, all right? So if you are able to put the situation into perspective, again, it gives you room to stop blaming yourself and stop doubting yourself, all right? So uh, again, putting it into perspective will sound something like, it's just a small sample. Uh, it's only losing session. I'm still a winning player overall. Let's look at my overall zoomed out graph and see my overall results. Ah, things aren't so bad. All right, so when you're doubting and blaming yourself, the solution, it, one of the solutions is to change your perspective, to put what is happening into context. This is such a powerful skill. I actually spent a whole other week teaching the skill of perspective to players because it's so crucial to long-term success. But you need to get good at understanding, okay, things won't go your way. You will make mistakes. You will run bad, and players will suck out on you consecutively over and over. Now what? Can you can you accept that? Number one, or can you put that into perspective? And what you'll find is when you get good at accepting and good at putting things into perspective, all of a sudden you stop blaming yourself, you stop doubting yourself, right? Because everything goes into the right context. Now you may be thinking, all right, Adam, but I've got a lot of self doubt. I've got a lot of self doubt in my game. All right, so uh, as most of you probably know. The solution to self-doubt is to build confidence, right? To build confidence. So we can do build confidence two ways. We can build confidence in ourselves, how we show up. I've done lots of videos on that, where rather than focus on the external outcome, you'll focus on how you show up. So your daily habits, your daily routines, how you're thinking, your attitude, really attach your, um, yeah, your confidence to uh, how you're showing up, not the external. So that's gonna eradicate doubt. And also uh, with acceptance and perspective, you basically have your confidence in the external that is going to be okay, right? You have confidence that no matter what happens, I'm going to be okay. I accept that I'm going to lose. I accept I'm going to run bad. I accept that I'm going to set bad beats. Ah, I'm okay with that. So you're, you're gaining confidence in the fact that you're showing up in the right way and you're also getting confidence that the external can't hurt you. And when you do that, all of a sudden, both of those self-blame and self-doubt start to get a lot lot quieter, all right? So uh, just to recap what we went through there, understand the emotions that you're experiencing. So for these players, it's frustration, anxiety, anger. Look at the trigger events that are causing those emotions to flare up. So these players are making mistakes, running bad, and consecutive bad beats. Look at the inner dialogue that you're using, the meaning that you're giving those events. These players were saying things like, I should know better, I'm not progressing, what if I keep losing? All of those were self-blame and self-doubt narratives. The way to override both of those or to combat those is to build another dialogue in your mind that uses acceptance and perspective as its as its skills, which acceptance will be things like, 
It's just a reason session. It's no big deal. I can handle this. Bring it on. This is what, what, what can we do to me? And put it in perspective, we'll acknowledge it's a small sample. Who cares if I have a losing session? I can handle this. I'm a winning player. I've got a great graph, great results over the long term. I'm okay with it. All right. So uh, when you start to build these skills, you realize, ah, if I'm struggling with self-doubt, it's because I haven't built the accompanying sub-skills. All right. So uh, I know there's a lot to take in with this video, but basically you've got to build an inner dialogue that is more positive. And for me, it's the inner coach. It's two specific voices, the voice of acceptance and the voice of perspective. Now, if you want to learn how to work on this and you want to go into more detail, I've put together a free PDF, uh, which is the eight skills for elite poker performance. This skill is number two. It will probably be on page seven or eight of that PDF. Jump into that and it will teach you the framework in more depth on how to start mastering that inner voice and eradicating self-doubt long-term. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash that like button before you go. So you have plenty more coming from me very soon.